What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today we're going to talk about cohabitating your reptiles. So, I don't know what it is lately, but I've been getting a lot of emails, messages on Facebook, Instagram, and even YouTube comments requesting I make a video on how to cohabitate and what my thoughts are, uh, what enclosures you need to do this, what precautions should you take, and, and all this stuff revolving around cohabitating. So if you don't know what cohabitating is, it's essentially taking animal A and animal B, putting them together and saying you're now friends and you're living together forever. So. Again, I don't know what sparked this desire to do it, and I do see it come in pulses. Uh, people want to do it, and then they don't, and then they want to do it, and then they don't. So there's maybe a different wave of keepers getting into this that think it's a good idea. Now, my first thought is, no, this is hands down a bad idea. Do not cohabitate your reptiles. But we will get into, if you are going to do it, and I can't talk you out of it, how to do it. And how to do it safely to the best that you can be safe about it. Now let's talk about a couple different situations where you may cohabitate. Cohabitation, and this isn't even really cohabitation, this is like a temporary housing situation. So this could be breeding. I may take a male and a female snake, put them together for breeding. So they're gonna live together for a little bit. But even when I do that, I'm pulling them out, putting them in their own enclosures, they're gonna, they're gonna be able to feed, rest up, and then go back to breeding again. So this isn't a constant, these things are gonna be together forever. Another situation where I personally cohabitate or keep snakes together is when I just have a litter of babies or a clutch of eggs from some pythons hatch out. I found that they do much better, at least in my experience, when I house them all together in one enclosure for the first couple weeks, let them shed out. I'll usually offer them a meal when they're all together under close supervision because I found that when you offer them a meal, they almost kind of feed off each other. Like, oh, what did that thing just do? What did this one just do? And then they all start eating a little bit easier, a little bit more readily than if I kept them in their own enclosures. It just seems like their stress level is down a little bit, specifically as babies because they're all kind of tighter. They feel like they're in, they, when you house them together as babies when they're born, you'll notice they're all like huddled together. Whether it's warm, cold, whatever it is, they're usually all in one giant ball. And I think that's because they feel more comfortable when they're all in this really tight space together. Now, as these animals shed and eat and do all that stuff, within three to four weeks of being born, I'd say four weeks maximum, they're all in their own enclosures. There's no more cohabitation and none of that stuff. Same thing with breeding. Once my male has done the job and the female ovulates, the male gets pulled out and he never goes back to her until it's breeding season again. So those are kind of the only two situations that I personally would cohabitate. But let's kind of get into why now. So these animals in the wild, they don't want friends for the most part. Now there are some animals like shingleback skinks that live together forever. Most of us don't have shingleback skinks. We have common reptiles, corn snakes, milk snakes, boa constrictors, Burmese pythons, reticulated pythons, whatever it may be. That's the only kind of animals. And these animals don't do well housed together. Uh, things like bearded dragons and frogs and stuff, they don't want to live together. So let's kind of talk as to why. Now, one is they can transfer diseases really easily. I can take a snake that's a boa and this other boa and one might be carrying something that the other one wasn't really immune to or doesn't have an immunity built up to it. Now one's healthy and the other one's sick and we're in this constant cycle of going to the vet and all this other stuff that we don't want to do. Um, I often hear the argument that, well, my local zoo has it. I saw, I went to my zoo and they had two boa constrictors housed together. Um, I don't know if that's really a good zoo. A lot of good zoos are not going to do that. And the good zoos typically have a massive display for these things. And they have a vet on call or on staff. So if something's wrong with one, they can immediately fix it. They can run their tests, run their blood work, do whatever they need to do, figure out what's wrong, and immediately treat it with some antibiotics. In the process, that animal's separated, put into quarantine until it's healthy again, and then it goes back into the general population. Now, a lot of good zoos are not going to cohabitate in general. They're going to have their own enclosures, their own species. Um, if they are cohabitating, some of the better zoos may actually just be trying to breed. And we're not even aware of it. We're walking in thinking, hey, there's two snakes together. They must, must be fine. Um, another really bad reason is a lot of snakes are they will eat each other. They're cannibalistic. Specifically things like uh, like milk snakes, king snakes, corn snakes. Uh, you ha kind of have a, a higher percentage of that happening. Not so much corn snakes. I've, I've 
put corn snakes together during breeding doesn't necessarily happen. Not so much ball pythons and, and um, boa constrictors and Burmese pythons, but it can happen. They can mistake each other for a rodent. And this actually just happened to me. I had two snakes breeding and I was feeding other animals. I walked past their enclosure, one bit the other, wrapped each other up, and actually tore its neck up pretty good. So the male has some pretty good gouges, the female has some pretty good gouges, because now they're both biting each other, and it took me about 10 minutes to actually separate them, because as soon as I got one off, the other one would wrap up against it. So for that reason, for their own safety, you shouldn't be cohabitating these animals. Now another reason is that they're all going to be fighting over the same hot spots and cool ends, and all this other stuff so they can't really thermoregulate as readily so their stress level is going to be up when stress is increased the snakes are more susceptible to getting sick and again we don't have vets on call at least most of us don't i know i don't um, and a lot of us don't even know where there is a good exotic vet so when your snake gets sick how are you going to fix it if you don't even know where the vet is i hear this so often and, and usually the people who want to cohabitate are the newer keepers who haven't really thought that far out of where is the closest vet and are they any good at even treating and diagnosing reptiles? So there are not a lot of good reptile vets out there. There's a good chance that if you live in any part of the United States, there's not a really good reptile vet around you. So that's another thing to consider. Now, if you are going to cohabitate, because there are some people that no matter what I say, they're convinced they're going to do it. So I always just try to give them the good information of if you're going to do it, this is how I would recommend doing it you're not going to be saving space by doing this. So if you are going to house two reptiles together, I usually say you need about four times the normal size enclosure. So if a boa constrictor is going to need a four by two by two forever, let's just use that that cage size, you may want to house them in something that's like eight by four by four, something that's much larger than the initial enclosure size if you just had two of them. Um, because they're going to be fighting over the same heat sources, fighting over the same cool ends, different gradients that you're going to create so again if you are going to cohabitate that enclosure better be large you better have multiple heat sources multiple cool ends multiple hides so they can get away from each other and a lot of people they'll say well in the wild they're going to cross paths correct they are going to bump into each other in the wild in the wild they may even seek each other out during these breeding seasons and kind of live in the same habitat but they can always get away this is this is something that kind of goes into a lot of other pieces but Snake A and Snake B can just go on their own separate ways in the wild. In our even super large enclosure, let's say we make it 16 by 16, they cannot get away from each other. There is only so far that they can separate each other from the whole environment So, because they're, they're closed off in captivity. So from that standpoint, it's no matter how large you make the enclosure, it's still not very good. Um, I've also had other snakes that, again, it's usually around feeding time that I've separated them, but one still smells like a rodent because it's been wrapped up in a rodent. Eating, I put them back together, and one's still a little bit hungry, and they go after each other. Now, a lot of the times it doesn't result into what I had happen the other day. Uh, they usually you can pull them apart and keep them away from, from each other, but the whole reason why they were together to begin with was breeding. Uh, they just got a little bit too excited, and it happens. When you're breeding, it, it's just going to happen. So it's something you have to be aware of, and that's a reason, another encouraging reason to not cohabitate is it's just a matter of time. It's kind of like feeding live prey. I don't want to get into the feeding debate of live versus frozen thawed, but it is a matter of time before that live prey is going to bite your snake. And then you're dealing with maybe a major injury or maybe a, a small, this thing got a little scuff and it's not a big deal. But it is going to happen where if you're housing these animals together, they're going to interact and they're going to harm each other at some point. If you do it long enough, it's going to happen. So why even take that risk to begin with is my personal thoughts on it um i don't know let me know in the comments what you guys think about cohabitating so uh, maybe i'll cut the video here so i'm not rambling on um hopefully you guys like this video please make sure to like it uh subscribe and keep following and uh and sharing these videos the more you guys share the more you give me those thumbs up it hits all these algorithms that i don't understand on youtube but it makes this channel grow and as i've said in the other videos the more this channel grows the more video topics i get the more topics and videos i can do for you guys so i appreciate you guys watching following subscribing and uh we'll catch you again next week thank you